Alright, what is going on guys? It's Taz here, and welcome back to the channel. Now today what I've got for you guys is my review on Destiny's Rise of Iron expansion. Now this expansion came out on Tuesday, so I've had plenty of time to play around with it and uh, get some, gather my thoughts on this DLC or expansion, and so what I'm going to do in this video guys is just sort of give you guys my review and sort of an overview on the DLC, tell you guys sort of the things that I like about it, some of the things that I don't like about it, and some suggestions for things that Bungie could add to this DLC in the future but before i get into this video i just want to say i'm sorry guys for not uploading for like the past couple of weeks um well it's it's been almost two weeks it, it'll be two weeks like tomorrow or something like that but it's been almost two weeks since i've uploaded and i just want to say i'm sorry about that i've just gotten pretty busy uh lately but uh i'm back now and i'm ready to do this destiny rise of iron review so without further ado guys let's get into this review First off, I just want to say I really enjoyed the story for Rise of Iron. I mean, I, I thought it was a very, very good, very good story, but it just didn't seem to last long enough for me. I think the core main missions, there were only about five main missions, but overall, the story for all for all of the missions was just really, really good. Um, the gameplay and everything was great for all the missions. I definitely really enjoyed the cutscenes and the story of the Iron Lords and everything, and just sort of having a DLC centered around Lord Saladin, which <laughs> was just really, really awesome but uh speaking of lord saladin real quick uh do any of you guys think that lord saladin sounds like optimus prime if you do tell me down in the comments but uh that's pretty funny is i just for the entire time that lord saladin was talking i'm like this guy just sounds like optimus prime but it's not i looked it up he's not optimus prime but uh he just sounds like him but uh yeah the, the story was really really good but i just feel like it was too short at five core missions but with uh, quests and sort of other side missions, it definitely helps round out that um, story mission count to a lot more than five. Um, I'm not e exactly sure how many there, how many like new missions and everything was, were added with uh, Rise of Iron, but definitely having the Plague Lands Patrol and having all those different um, different patrol beacons that you can go to. Um, I think they added a new patrol type which was uh, quarantine I think it is and then also having them add in uh, Archon's Forge which is basically like the um uh, what was that thing in uh, Taken King? The uh, Court of Oryx. Yeah, that's what it is. So it was, it's basically like the Court of Oryx, but in the Archon's Forge area of the Plague Lands, which is really, really fun to do. I, I think it's actually slightly better than um, than the Court of Oryx, just because it, it... I feel like it gives you a bit better gear. I'm not sure. Just because, just because like, if somebody else starts it other than you you still get gear and everything which is definitely really really nice but uh yeah all the sort of main story mode things like all the story and sort of the side missions and stuff i thought are, are very very good but um the quests let's move over to the quest the quest i i really really like them actually i mean i, I think i like the quest a bit more now than i did back in uh taken king just because the quests They've been they've they've become a bit easier, not not too easy. You don't want things ever to be super easy, but they're not super hard as far as I know at the moment. I've completed quite a few of them. I've de I've gotten the exotic Kvostov and I've gotten my uh, my Galahorn, but but um yeah, the quest for the the Kvostov, I was able to do it um, the first day. I, did, I actually did it before I finished the story mode. But uh, yeah, the, the quest for that was definitely pretty nice. If you had your old Kvostov, it was easy to start. If you didn't, it was a bit harder. You had to go around and patrol a little bit and get, I think it was a splicer key that you have to get to unlock a certain area to actually go get that piece for the Kvostov to start the quest. But overall, the Kvostov quest was definitely really, really good. And I really enjoyed that last mission and just sort of the chat that you had with your ghost at the end. It was, <laughs> it was, it, it gives you the feels right there at the end but uh that 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 mission was great the uh i think it was called the kvostov rising yeah that one that's probably one of my favorite missions from this dlc and it was great to get the kvostov back i mean i've always wanted the kvostov back in destiny that you could actually use other than using it in um in crucible but it, it's great to see that you can actually get it it drops at 350 which is really nice it's it, it drops 10 light higher than any of the any of the blues that you can get now which is great but it's great that it's an exotic and i really enjoyed it but um the galahorn the galahorn quest was a bit harder but it's not impossible to do solo i mean i was able to do it solo but it's a lot easier when you do it with other people like i was helping a friend out earlier do it and it's definitely a lot easier when you have multiple people doing it but it's not impossible as long as you're a, a good enough a good substantial light level you can get through it easily but it's 
<laughs> there, there are lots of lots of waves of enemies to get through, and it's definitely not an easy task. And I'm glad it's not because the Galahorn, in my opinion, is still a very good weapon. It's still very viable. I honestly, I would honestly choose the Galahorn over the over the exotic sword that you get at the end of the campaign. But um, it's just it's just hard to choose between the Galahorn and the Kvostov. But uh, speaking of weapons, weapons in the Rise of Iron are definitely very good. I mean, you can basically use all of your weapons. For, yeah, you can use any of your weapons from year two. You can infuse them up to year three light levels. But when you first start off the campaign, it's definitely good to sort of, even though you're going to have a lot of blues, until you get up to about 340, which is the highest that engrams will drop blues. Um, if you decrypt them, that's the highest that they'll decrypt to is 340. But once you get over 340, then you can start sort of infusing things into your old year two stuff. And by that time, you will have started to get some um ex some not exotics well y you probably could get some exotics by then if you have some uh, three of coins or something like that but uh you'll be getting some legendaries and everything by that time and you can sort of start infusing things and boost your light level a lot that way but uh yeah i mean just using being able to still use your old year two weapons is definitely really awesome in my opinion it was it, it was kind of it, it, it wasn't ideal to have in um taking king that you couldn't use any of your old year one weapons but obviously Bungie did that on purpose because a lot of weapons were kind of broken in year one and they didn't want to uh, break year two right off the bat but uh, being able to sort of use any weapon from year two into year three is definitely really nice but uh, it, it, there's definitely a, a few tactics that you can use to boost your light level up a bunch without having to actually use your old year two weapons until you're a substantial light level about like 340 350 is really when you can start infusing new stuff into your old stuff but um just decrypting engrams and getting faction packages is definitely the way to go as well as doing the uh the archons forge is definitely pretty good and also the strikes but the strikes are pretty difficult right now but uh just getting your just getting your light level up will make them a lot easier but it definitely takes some time so overall i definitely think destiny's rise of iron expansion is very awesome it's, it's very good it's definitely a nice thing to sort of revitalize the destiny destiny community and everything it's uh, it's it's definitely served its purpose it's made me think about destiny so much and it's made me just want to play it a bunch and uh it's tried to raise my light level play as many missions as i can get some new exotics and everything Thing. but uh, it, it definitely has served its purpose but it, it just unfortunately the only downside to this DLC is it's it's been kind of buggy it, it just in my opinion um just sort of with my experiences at least for the first few days there was a lot of contacting destiny servers a lot of glitches when I was actually getting my Galahorn um, it said it was once you finished that uh, mission where you were trying to sort of like clear out a bunch of enemies right at the end and it said uh, go claim your Galahorn it, it wasn't even in my inventory and it was saying use your Galahorn to finish fighting off these enemies and I'm like I don't have my Galahorn but it, it, at least it went to my postmaster which was nice but uh, yeah there's just been a few a few bugs and glitches that will obviously be fixed as the Rise of Iron continues and everything like that but it, it, it just it was definitely kind of annoying but it's definitely getting better so other than a few little glitches and maybe a story mode that might m might benefit from a few extra missions the rise of iron is definitely a great start to year three of destiny now I'm sure that there will be a couple of other major updates, uh, not any like paid DLCs, but major updates sort of like they did with Taken King, like they had the April update, so I'm sure they will do something around that time this year for uh, Rise of Iron once people sort of say, hey, we need some new stuff, they will, I'm sure they will add some new stuff in with the Rise of Iron later on, and um, uh, one thing that I, I can't wait for them to do is I'm pretty sure it's confirmed that they're going to be bringing back Sparrow Racing, but I, I just I just want them to bring back Sparrow Racing so bad, I just... <laughs> I want to play it with the rise of iron maybe use my uh iron gallery wing and uh go around try to win some uh spell racing races but uh yeah overall i really really enjoyed this dlc I, I think i'd give it eight flaming battle axes out of ten um maybe if i were, was able to use some battle axes more than just in the last mission and uh in the archon's forge i'd give it a higher rating but uh yeah nothing against it but uh yeah i mean i really enjoyed this dlc i love it it's great 
and um, yeah, if you guys haven't played it and you're thinking about getting it, I definitely suggest um, getting this this expansion. It's really awesome. It's it's not as good as Taken King, I don't think, but it's just it's not as big of an expansion as Taken King was. It's sort of it's bigger. It's definitely bigger than the first two DLCs for Destiny in Year One were, but it's not quite as big as the Taken King. But it's definitely very very good, and it's and it's a a good start to Year Three, I think. So uh, I really enjoyed this. I want to know your guys' thoughts on this. If you've played uh, Rise of Iron, I want to know your thoughts down in the comments below, or if you're gonna if you're thinking about buying it, tell me <laughs> tell me that down in the comments also. But uh, yeah, until next time, guys. It's been Taz, and I'll see you guys in the next video.